Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. Madeira Europis Synagogue. Here was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexions to black and skin color. The black presence in the lands of the Bible, page 15. Welcome to the Universal Center for Renovations channel, where in this episode, Abraham, or Abraham the Hebrew, exposes the gods of the ancient world. The gods of the ancient world, the goddess Venus, is actually the planet Venus. The moon is the god Nana. The planet Mercury is the god Enki. The sun is the god Surya. Mars is the god Horus. The planet Saturn is the god Ninurta. The planet Jupiter is the god Zeus. The gods of the ancient world. Romans, the first chapter, NIV. Romans chapter 1 and 25. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. Amen. A biblical commentary on Romans. Chapter 1, 25, Meaning and Commentary Who changed the truth of God unto a lie? Not the truth of the gospel, which they were unacquainted with, but that which might be known of God as true, and was known of them by the light of nature, or the true God himself, whom they changed into a lie by ascribing to false deities which were lying vanities. Those things which were known of God and by worshipping them instead of him. For they worshipped and served the creature more than the creator or above him or against him in opposition to him or beside him, others along with him or neglecting him and not worshiping him at all, which is aggregated in that what they worshiped was a creature either of their own or of God's making in whom they neglected was the creator of them. The Book of the Wisdom of Solomon, the Apocrypha, Chapter 13, CEVDCI Version, The Wisdom of Solomon, Chapter 13, the Apocrypha. It is foolish to worship nature. Solomon continues praying. Verse 1, You are the living God, and only those who are fools by birth, could look 
at your creation and not learn about you. But instead, some people worshipped the things you created, such as fire and wind and storms and stars and rivers and planets. Those fools believed these things were the gods that ruled the world because they were so beautiful. But you are the Lord as well as the source of all beauty. So let those fools know how much more beautiful you are than any of these things. And if anyone is amazed at the mighty power of nature, then they should realize that the Creator is even more powerful. Indeed, the power and beauty of nature should convince us that their Creator is even more powerful and beautiful. And the Apocrypha, the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 1 to five. The Most High God of Israel controls nature and uses nature to accomplish his plans. And again, in process of time, thou broughtest the flood upon those that dwelt in the world and destroyeth them. Second Esdras chapter 3 verse 9 the Apocrypha And it came to pass in every of them that as death was to Adam so was the flood to these. Second Esdras, chapter 3, verse 10. Nevertheless, one of them thou leftest, namely Noah, with his household, of whom came all righteous men. Second Esdras, chapter 3, verse 11. And it happened that when they that dwelt upon the earth began to multiply and had gotten them many children and were a great people, they began again to be more ungodly than the first. Second Esdras, chapter 3, verse 12. Now, when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst chose thee a man from among them, whose name was Abraham. Him thou lovest, and unto him only thou showest thy will, and madest an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. Second Esdras, chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Ten generations passed between the time of Noah and Abraham. Mankind followed the same paths as their ancestors who previously died in the flood. The Most High God sent signs of disapproval by way of natural disasters and constant wars. Natural disasters are not random events, 
but are totally controlled by the Most High, God of Israel, who have complete control over nature, the planets, the sun, the moon, wind, storms, and all aspects of the physical universe. The 4.2 kilo year event. The 4.2 kilo year, thousand year BP or before present time, a ridification event was a long term drought. Starting around 2200 BC, it probably lasted the entire 22nd century BC. A thousand year event. It has been hypothesized to have caused the collapse of the old kingdom in Egypt as well as the Akkadian Empire in Mesopotamia, in the Langzhou culture, in the lower Langzhi River area in China. The drought may also have initiated the collapse of the Indus Valley civilization. In India, with some of its population moving southeastward more into India, the south part of India, to follow the movement of their desired habitat, as well as the migration of Indo European speaking people into India, people moving from Central Asia into the areas of Pakistan and northern India. Also, to explain the Lingzhu culture, these people, that culture would have been related to Melanesians, people that live in the South Pacific, and not related to the modern Han Chinese, who are descendants of uh, cultures that came from the Near East. Global distribution of the 4.2 kilo year event. The hatched areas were affected by wet conditions or flooding. And the dotted areas by drought or dust storms. A desert sand storm. The tomb of Anktifa, governor and military leader of Egypt, under the Herela Cleopolitan Ninth Dynasty, Old Dynasty of Egypt. These scenes take place a little before the birth of Abraham, the Hebrew. O Kingdom Tomb of Actify 2100 BC The BBC website History The Fall of the Egyptian Old Kingdom by Professor Fakirai Hassan. Professor Hassan discovers the true cause behind the collapse of the Egyptian Old Kingdom. Ancient Egypt in 2150 BC, Egypt was hit by a series of exceptionally low Nile floods that may have influenced the collapse of the centralized government of the Old Kingdom after a famine. 4.2 Kilo Year Event Aftermath of the drought and sand storms 
which destroyed the Egyptian Old Kingdom around 2200 BC. Despair and collapse. What was the factor that weakened the monarchy and allowed provincial governors to assume royal power over the regions? One possibility is an invasion by Asiatics. However, there is no evidence that Asiatics invaded Egypt at the end of the Old Kingdom. Alternatively, the initial breakdown of the Old Kingdom was caused by a sudden, unanticipated, catastrophic reduction in the Nile floods over two or three decades. This was so severe that famine gripped the country and paralyzed the political institutions. People were forced to commit unheard of atrocities, such as eating their own children and violating the sacred sanctity of the royal dead. The Egyptian sage Apuwar gives a graphic description of the horrendous events of that time. Lo, the desert claims the land. Towns are ravaged. Upper Egypt became a wasteland. Lo, everyone's hair has fallen out. Lo, great and small say, I wish I was dead. Lo, children of nobles are dashed against walls. Infants are put on high ground. Food is lacking. Words of fine linen are beaten with sticks. Ladies suffer like maid servants. Lo, those who were entombed are cast on high grounds. Men stir up strife, unopposed. Groaning is throughout the land, mingled with laments. See now the land deprived of kingship. What the pyramids hid? Is empty. The people are diminished. Egyptologists concede that there can be no doubt that these texts relate to fact. There is inconvertible evidence that this terrible famine was caused by the reduction of the Nile floods. Ancient Egypt was a high civilization in a inspiration for many nations in science and technology and a example of what type of achievements mankind can accomplish through education. But despite all its wonders of engineering feats, this great society fell. It could not survive the natural disasters, economic hardships, wars, and all the challenges that it was faced with. It was not the perfect society that mankind looked for. Ultimately, it was rejected. Heaven on earth was not achieved by the ancient Egyptians. Famine Old Kingdom of Egypt Proverbs chapter 1 verse 26 to 28 KJV I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they cry upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. 
Sargon of Akkad, first ruler of the Akkadian Empire, 2334-2279 B.C. The Akkadian Empire was the first ancient empire of Mesopotamia after the long-lived civilization of Sumer. The Akkadian Empire and the Sarganic Dynasty The early inhabitants of this region were predominantly Semitic, and their speech is called Akkadian. To the south of the region of Akkad lay Sumer, the southern or southeastern division of ancient Babylonia, which was inhabited by a non-Semitic people known as Sumerian. Shinar, Chaldeans, the Hermetic group of people that were related to Nimrod was the people of Sumer. The Akkadians were Shemetic, Arafaxad, children of Shem. Akkadians, Shemetic, Sumerians, Hermetic. The victory stilly of Naram Sena, 2254-2218 B.C. Nara Sem was Sargon's grandson, an Akkadian. Job, chapter 12, verse 19 to 23, NIV. If it's a question of strength, he's the strong one. If it's a matter of justice, who dares to summon him to court? Though I am innocent, my own mouth will pronounce me guilty. Though I am blameless, it would prove me wicked. I am innocent, but it makes no difference to me. I despise my life. Innocent or wicked, it is all the same to God. That's why I say, He destroys both the blameless and the wicked. When a plague sweeps through, He laughs at the death of the innocent. He makes nations great and destroys them. He enlarges nations and disperses them. The Akkadian Empire, 2300 BC, was the second civilization to subsume independent societies into a single state, the first being ancient Egypt around 3100 BC. It has been claimed that the collapse of the state, the Akkadian state, was influenced by a wide-ranging, centuries-long drought. Archaeological evidence documents widespread abandonment of the agricultural plains of northern Mesopotamia and dramatic influxes of refugees into southern Mesopotamia around 2170 BC. A 180 kilometer long war, the repeller of the Amorites, who were Western Shemites, 
was built across central Mesopotamia to stem nomadic incursions to the south around 2150 BC. The Kutuin people who originally inhabited the Zagros Mountains in Iran defeated the demoralized Akkadian army, took Akkad and destroyed it around 2115 BC. Widespread agricultural change in the Near East is visible at the end of the third millennium BC. The Akkadian Empire, 2334 to 2154 BC. The Indus Valley Civilization was established by Elamites, Trujim of Elam, son of Shem. Indus Valley Civilization was a colony from Elam, the son of Shem. The biblical Noah's son. Maluha is the Sumerian name of a prominent trading partner of Sumer during the Middle Bronze Age. Its identification remains an open question, but most scholars associate it with the Indus Valley civilization. The Indus Valley Civilization. There were many urban centers and cities established in the Indus Valley Civilization. Urban centers of the Indus Valley Civilization were abandoned and replaced by desperate local cultures because of the same climate change. That affected the neighboring regions to the west, the Akkadian Empire. As of 2016, many scholars believed that the drought and a decline in trade with Egypt and Mesopotamia caused the collapse of the Indus civilization. Indus Valley Civilization 3300 BC to 1300 BC After the flood, after the biblical flood, the nations built many cities and urban centers. And many cities were destroyed. Ruins of a city of the Indus Valley civilization. But he stands alone, and who can oppose him? He does whatever he pleases. Job chapter 23, verse 14, NIV. Ancient Egyptians. Dominion and all belong to God. He established order in the heights of heaven. Can his forces be numbered? Or whom does his light not rise? How then can a mortal be righteous before God? How can one born of woman be pure? If even the moon is not bright and the stars are not pure in his eyes, how much less a mortal who is but a maggot, a human being who is only a worm. The book of Job, chapter 25, verse 2 to 6, NIV. After the flood, starting with Abraham, the Most High God talked with mankind. Again, the book of Job, chapter 37, 
verse 1 to 16. At this my heart pounds and leaps from its place. Listen, listen to the roar of his voice, to the rumbling that comes from his mouth. He unleashes his lightning beneath the whole heaven and sends it to the ends of the earth. After that comes the sound of his roar. He thunders with his majestic voice. When his voice resounds, he holds nothing back. God's voice thunders in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our understanding. He says to the snow, fall on the earth and to the rain shower be a mighty downpour so that everyone he has made may know his work he stops all people from their labor the animals take cover they remain in their dens the tempest come out from its chamber the cold from the driving winds the breath of God produce ice, and the broad waters become frozen. He loads the clouds with moisture. He scatters his lightning through them. At his direction, they swirl around over the face of the whole earth to do whatever he commands them. He brings the clouds to punish people or to water his earth and show his love. Listen to this, Job. Stop and consider God's wonders. Do you know how God controls the clouds and makes his lightning flash? Do you know how the clouds hang poised? Those wonders of him who has perfect knowledge? The book of Job, chapter 37. Verse 1 to 16. The story of heaven on earth. The story of peace on earth. The end of war on earth. And the brotherhood between men. Includes the history of the Hebrew Abraham. Ur. City of of the Chaldeans, Abraham, in the land of his birth. Josephus, Antiquities of the Jews, Book 1, Chapter 7 How Abraham, our forefather, went out of the land of the Chaldeans and lived in the land then called Canaan but now Judea and now Abraham having no son of his own adopted Lot his brother Aaron's son and his wife Sarah's brother and he left the land of Chaldea when he was 75 years old and at the command of God, went into Canaan. And therein he dwelt himself, and left it to his posterity. He was a person of great sagacity, both for understanding all things and persuading his hearers, and not mistaken in his opinions, for which reasons he began to have higher notions of virtue than others had and he determined to renew and to change the opinion all men happen then to have concerning God for he was the first that ventured to publish this notion that there was but one God the creator of the universe and that as to other gods if they contributed 
anything to the happiness of men that each of them afforded it only according to his appointment and not by their own power. This, his opinion, was derived from the irregular phenomena that was visible both at land and sea, as well as those that happened to the sun and moon and all the heavenly bodies thus. If, said he, these bodies had power of their own, they would certainly take care of their own regular motions. But since they do not preserve such regularity, they make it plain that in so far as they cooperate to our advantage, they do it not of their own abilities, but as they are subservient to him that commands them, to whom alone we ought justly to offer our honor and thanksgiving. For which doctrines, when the Chaldeans and other people of Mesopotamia raised a tumult against him, he thought fit to leave that country, and at the command and by the assistance of God, he came and lived in the land of Canaan. And when he was there settled, he built an altar and performed a sacrifice to God. Abraham in Egypt. Josephus, Antiquities of the Jews. For whereas the Egyptians were formerly addicted to different customs and despised one another's sacred and accustomed rites, and were very angry one with another on that account, Abraham conferred with each of them, and confuting the reasonings they made use of, every one for their own practices, demonstrated that such reasonings were vain and void of truth, whereupon he was admired by them in those conferences as a very wise man and one of great scarcity. When he discoursed on any subject he undertook, and this not only in understanding it, but in persuading other men also to assent to him, he communicated to them arithmetic and delivered to them the science of astronomy. For before Abraham came into Egypt, they were unacquainted with those parts of learning. For that science came from the Chaldeans into Egypt, and from thence to the Greeks also. The sun, the moon, and all the heavenly bodies, thus, if, said he, these bodies have power of their own, they will certainly take care of their own regular motions. But since they do not preserve such regularity, they make it plain that in so far as they cooperate to our advantage, they do it not of their own abilities, but as they are subservient to him that commands them, to whom alone we ought justly to offer our honor and thanksgiving. For which doctrines, when the Chaldeans and other people of Mesopotamia raised a tumult against him, he thought fit to leave that country, and at the command and by the assistance of God, he came and lived in the land of Canaan. And when he was settled there, he built an altar and performed a sacrifice to God. <laughs> 